All right, on this episode of Bouts Talking Bouts, we're in Toronto, OWE First Excursion, and joined by Bolo Fong. How's it going there, man? Uh, it's going very good. Thank you for having me on the show. Yeah, I'm curious, like, what the reception was, like, uh, with the crowd and stuff like that. Like, was it pretty much, like, what you thought it would be? Like, it seemed like a pretty raucous crowd out there, for all intents and purposes. Um, you never know as a performer. I think, like, if you start to think that you're too big and, like, oh, yeah, they'll know exactly what's going on when I show up, that's uh, one of the first criminal mistakes you can make as a performer. Um, like, I forgot who told me. Someone really smart and really experienced told me, always experience a crowd and try to approach the crowd like it's your very first time. And uh, I always try that because of it. And it's true, because no matter how popular you are, there's n no one quite knows what you're doing. And yeah, history-making card for sure. The fact that like you know a Chinese promotion coming over to pro you know, do everything in Canada and stuff like that. And it was, a, it was a great event, all things considered. What does it mean for you to be part of an event like this? Uh, I forgot it was audio, but I'm cheering. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's a really big honor, to be honest with you. Um, it's quite, quite, a, quite a responsibility to represent China against what is a pretty star-studded card. Like, not to say anything, but this is pretty much Fighter Fight, Fighter Fest. This is pretty much the exact same card with the same wrestlers. And there was many, many people who, yeah, if you tech, that was it. And then it was that there were a couple of Chinese guys slotted on here, and some guys got a chance. And you know, when you have that kind of pressure, where you have veterans like Christopher Daniels and Sima and up-and-comers like Private Party, you really want to show your best. You don't want to bring down their show because they're giving you an opportunity. And uh, for me, I think there's always a lot of pressure going in. Like, uh, you know how when you drive up, it's like a roller coaster when you, when you click, 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 click on the way up. That's the hard part. But when you're on the way down and you're at the show and you're wrestling, for me, I always find that to be a good part. And uh, I like to think I did, uh, I hate to say I did my best, but I like to say I, I put up a pretty good performance of what I can do. And uh, hopefully, I hope that OW was happy about it. And I hope that the Canadian audience is happy about it and that they can grow their brand because it is very difficult to build a wrestling brand. Yeah, absolutely, man. And like great performance in there with Brandon Cutler and everything like that. What was your assessment of, I guess, his skills as a performer and the chemistry you guys had there? Yeah, it was a good guy, man. I, I mean, kayfabe is dead. <laughs> He's a piece of shit. I hate him. Sorry. I lied. I hate him. But yeah, no, he's, a, he's the worst. I hate him. Go back to California. I'm but, glad I won and I would, I hit him in the nuts and I would hit him in the nuts at least five more times for no extra money. I gotta do what you gotta do, man. If you're not willing no, to no, cheat, no, you're not no, ready like, to win, right? Like, I, I would willingly punch that man in the nuts five times for no money. That's not what I have to do, it's just what I want to do. <laughs> Cut out the first part. <laughs> but yeah, these OWE events, like kind of the microcosm, but the macrocosm seems to be just the health of indie wrestling altogether. Can you speak to the current state of indie wrestling and just how vibrant and healthy everything is with that? Uh, I think it's a, it's very impressive to see Toronto blow up so well. Um, when we were at Mania, let me uh, introduce my attack partner, Randy Bino, really quick. What's good? But uh, when we were at Mania, it feels like Mania Weekend. And I think that's a really big feeling, uh, where there's all these shows running back to back to back to back. And I guess it's almost like a, a music festival where, you know, you may not be a headliner, so this might be Digital Dreams. You're not Zed, but you have an opportunity and a platform, and that, that's a really big deal. And I think that level of energy is contagious. And I think, Word. Yeah. <laughs> I think anyone who given, was, was given that opportunity would be appreciative of it, and I know I definitely am. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you guys have been great with your time. Anything you want to add as a parting thought as we're kind of just wrapping things up here with everything here? What's up? Well, I, I hope you enjoyed the show, and um, I hope you check it out. I think it's very difficult, and it's a big market to tap into Chinese pro wrestling, which is very strange, to be honest. I guess it's kind of a tangent, where like uh, Chinese opera is very simpler, similar to professional wrestling. But at the same time, I think it's very hard for anyone to try to start a new business in a new country when there are, I guess you would say, set demographics. Like I know America is a wrestling demographic, Japan, Mexico. And I think that I would give credit, and I think anyone should give credit to someone who is willing to take a risky endeavor into a field that has no guarantees and is very difficult. And I'm, I hope that our product represents a good step and a, a way for fans to step in and say, hey, let's check this out and let's support this because I think that is really important to um, not only myself, but for many other Chinese people too. Yeah, well, I think it was a great first impression and I appreciate the time, guys. Enjoy the rest of your night there. Thank you very much.